good morning. Good morning to each and every one of you and welcome this morning to Peace Through the Word. Uh, again, a daily devotional ministry of Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church in Benson, Arizona. But this morning I'm coming to you from my study at my residence in Oro Valley, Arizona on Friday the 13th of May 2021. Uh, excuse me, it's the 14th of May. <laughs> 14th of May uh, of 2021. And so good to welcome you this morning, coming to you a little early uh, because I've got uh, just a lot to get done today. Uh, tomorrow is tax day. I've got to meet with my accountant today and just a lot of things on the agenda. So again, I thank you for allowing me to come to you early today. Uh, with Peace Through the Word, and so good to welcome you wherever you're chiming in worldwide uh, this morning. We do appreciate that so much, and we appreciate your partnership uh, in this particular piece of ministry. Uh, brothers and sisters, this morning, uh, again, we're looking through the lenses of our theologian, Dr. Martin Luther. And this morning, he's going to talk about uh, a subject that is quite... Um, Ah, uh, quite profound, I guess is a word to use, and that is um, true disciples. And so what that connotates is that there are false disciples. You know, a lot of people might think that they're a disciple simply because maybe they've got a Christian denominational label attached to them, or uh, maybe it's just their own opinion. Uh, but Jesus has some very strong words and instructions that uh, actually uh, confirms and affirms what a true disciple is. And so uh, that's the lens that we're going to look at this morning through Dr. Martin Luther. What is a true disciple? How do we know if someone is a true disciple of Jesus Christ? And there are, there, there's evidence for that. So I pray that that's going to bless you. I pray it's going to inspire you. I pray it's also going to maybe move you to be more intentional, to be obedient to what Jesus has called us to be, his disciples. So brothers and sisters, we come together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear our voices, and in the morning we prepare a sacrifice for you, and we watch. Our mouths are filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So the passage of Scripture that I'm going to share with you, Come, it's only one verse. It's St. John uh, chapter 8, verse 31. And uh, it's a conversation that Jesus is having. And uh, he's talking to uh, the Jews. Uh, and they were having quite a conversation, shall we say. <laughs> Got to have a little coffee here this morning. Trusting that you are too. So it says, So Jesus uh, said to the Jews who had believed in him. Now these are Jewish believers in Jesus. He says, If you abide in my word. Now notice there's a there's an if clause there. There's a condition. And that condition that Jesus laid, lays out, he says, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So the condition is abiding in Jesus' word. What does that mean to abide in Jesus' word? Does that mean just to have a conceptual knowledge of it? A lot of Christians think so, and the reason I say that is because their actions uh, testify to that. They test their actions testify to that confession. Just to have a conceptual knowledge of it. No, not hardly. To abide in Jesus' word means you obey it. You do it. 
with no reservation. If Jesus says it, that settles it. You do it. Irregardless of how it might make you feel or anything else for that matter. But we have a lot of Christians today that filters everything through their human opinions and human logic and that is what they worship. It's not abiding by God's word. And so that's how then they enact their life. And so they're living their life in accordance to themselves, not in accordance to the teachings and precepts of Jesus Christ. And so they think that, there are, that they are a disciple of Jesus, but in essence, no, they're not. They're a disciple of themselves. And we've got a lot of so-called Christians like that, a lot. I mean, it's a plethora of, of them. So again, Jesus says, if you abide in my word, you will truly be my disciple. You see, if there is a, you know, let me just give you, for instance, an example. Let's say that there is a commandment that completely spells out, thou shalt not do whatever, or thou shalt do whatever. And you wantonly disobey that. You cannot then say, I'm a disciple of Jesus. No, you're not. You are not. Not by a long shot. You are a disciple of yourself. And you're on dangerous, very dangerous ground because you are wantonly in, engaging in disobedience as to what Jesus spells out. And if you think that you know more about them, people who have studied and stuff like that, you're kidding yourself. And you're setting yourself up for an incredible uh, fall. So it's very serious business, my brothers and sisters. It is. It's very serious business. So anyway, let's see how Dr. Martin Luther wants to unpack this for us because he does a better job than I do. So here's what he says. He says, Christ preaches about true and false followers. Most certainly does. Of God's word. He is saying, many hear the gospel and stick with it because it's useful to them. They gain money, possessions, and honor from it. Yes, dear friends, who wouldn't want that? This is why I teach that if you live by what I say, you are truly my disciples. For I have two kinds of disciples. The first kind believes or trusts in me, and they praise and listen to the gospel and say, this is the real truth. I consider these people excellent disciples. They continue to believe or trust. Then there are others who hear the gospel, but when the battle heats up, they say, oh my, I don't know whether I should give up this or that thing for the sake of the gospel. You know, and, and, and people will willingly disobey in a, 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 a commandment simply because they want, um, you know, joy, companionship, whatever the case might be. And that, to them, trumps everything else. Mm, that's what Dr. Martin Luther is saying here. But... Uh, they don't know whether they should give up this or that thing for the sake of the gospel. There are only a few who hold tightly to the gospel when there's a cross to carry. Yeah, just a very few. Where can I find those who will stand firm? Therefore, I say, if you live by what I say, my disciples, people will get, gladly believe in Christ or trust in Christ if it meant becoming rich and acquiring a kingdom. But if it involves suffering, then their faith is finished. I'm seeing that being played out today, even amongst relatives, close relatives. You know, their comfort, their, their happiness, their whatever is trumping everything else. It's doing it. And it's very uh, uh, devastating. It's, it, it's, it's crippling. It, 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 and if they're not careful it can very jeopardize their faith, okay? So Christ knows many of them won't keep on following his teaching. See what I mean? And then they'll fall away. It's just prime stuff. So remaining true to his teaching is rare. 
especially when evil winds begin to blow. Many become Christians and hold to the gospel in the beginning. Afterwards, they fall away, just as the believers in this passage did. See what I just got through telling? See, it's not how you start out the race of faith. It's how you finish. And are you going to finish strong and well? Don't know. The only way you're going to do that is by me, 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 remaining true to Jesus' words, not your own. And I don't care what, what, what your situation is. Your happiness, your comfort, your whatever never trumps Jesus' word. Never. Rather have you be miserable in this life and have joy and ecstasy in life eternal, most assuredly. All right. It's similar to the parable about the seed that fell on the rock. When the heat of the sun beat down on it, it wilted and dried up. But those who stick with the gospel are true disciples of Christ. We don't have very many of those. We've got a lot of false ones with a lot of Christian denominational names attached to them. And they think that they're so good when in, rea when in reality they're so evil. Pretty bad stuff. So my encouragement, though, is to all of us is to remain true to Jesus' word. No matter how much it might hurt or be uncomfortable for you, remain true to God's word. All right? Seriously. That's the bottom line. All right? And you know what that will do? That will give you true, genuine, real peace. It really will. God's word for us this morning in a very powerful way. Amen. <clears throat> so brothers and sisters, together we want to profess the Christian faith and we'll use the words of the Apostles' Creed. So together we profess. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Got to get another cup of coffee. <laughs> Love my coffee in the morning. And so, uh, brothers and sisters, together, let's pray the wonderful prayer our Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer, on this beautiful morning. Together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, and our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept us this night from all harm and danger, and we pray that you would keep us this day also from sin and every evil, that all of our doings in life may please you. For into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies and souls, and all things. Let your holy angels be with us, that the evil foe may have no power over us. Amen. So let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, again, I want to thank you so much for chiming in early today. And thank you for accommodating me to peace through the word. And I pray that you've been blessed this morning and will continue to do so. It's a one, a, just a beautiful, beautiful day here in southern Arizona. We've had temperatures now in triple digits. We broke the 100-degree mark the other day, so it's really good. Just love it. 
and uh, maybe it'll be again 100 today who knows 100 plus maybe hope so it's always nice to have nice warm temperatures in the desert <laughs> that's why we live in the desert so anyway go in god's grace and mercy serve him today and uh, enjoy your life that he's given to you and the wheels have been retracted so of the flaps and i convey to each and every one of you until we meet again tremendous blue skies <laughs>